motivating and empowering women. Emphasizing knowledge of power to create, nurture, and transform lives to come. It's definitely going to be a great time in the Ladies' Lounge tonight with your host, Kathy B. To advertise on Ladies' Lounge, contact Kathy B. at Kathy B. at SourceRadioNetwork.com. Now, here's your host, Kathy B. Nation, good evening, and welcome to the Ladies' Lounge. I am your host, Kathy B. We have about two hours before we leave the live feed. Telephone number to leave this night is 619-924-0933. Again, 619-924-0933. Well, I tell you, I am so excited because I have two beautiful, amazing women here in the studio with me tonight. But before I let you guys know who I have as my first guest, of course, you know that we've already launched the Love Zone Monday Book Club. That's right. I need more of you, Source Nation, to be inside of the book club talking about some wonderful and amazing things that we are doing right here on Source Radio Network. And then, of course, you all know that, you know, the the page itself has a lot of content when it comes to love, longevity, and success. But are you guys listening on Monday night? That's right. Love Zone Mondays is right here on Source Radio Network every single Monday beginning at 7 p.m., so you definitely don't want to miss this. Well, tonight's broadcast has been brought to you by some amazing people, and let me take an opportunity to thank them because this show would not be possible without them. And they are Zelina Health, Wellness, and Fitness, Paper the Film Productions, Revolution Mills, and Renovations. All right, guys, let me tell you, I have had the opportunity to really have um, some amazing women in the studio with me. And, of course, you all know that I have had the uh, opportunity over the last few months and the last couple of years to bring in a lot of brand-new books. But what I love most is the fact that I am speaking with women that are coming together and collaborating on some great information. They're telling their journeys and they're sharing us, uh, sharing them with us. Now, let me tell you about this real exciting book that we're going to be speaking of and maybe some dynamic women. Now, this book is designed to feature women who are using their gifts for the greater good, taking the gifts beyond the boundaries of their own zip codes and being intentional about inspiring others by sharing their story, their lessons, and their knowledge. Now, each contributing author will share their story about how they discovered their unique gifts or calling and fight life distractions, what challenges they're facing, also walking in their greatness. I love that. Now, how they find the drive and focus to commit to this process, the most pivotal lessons that they've learned, what fears they've had to face, and how they now use their gifts to impact and inspire others. I love that. They're taking their gifts and they're impacting and they're inspiring others. So I'm not going to let you guys wait any longer because I have a beautiful young lady in the studio with me. I'm going to be speaking with Ms. Shanika Johnson. But before I bring her in, we're going to take this quick break. And on the other side, Shanika Johnson will be in the studio with me. We'll be right back. We'll be back, Source Radio Network, after this commercial break. Source Radio Network is just one of the many platforms that is used to fulfill dreams of our listeners. 
and create a purpose that will impact the lives of our communities, cities, and the world. It is often said that great things will happen when a group of driven people work together to accomplish one goal. We're giving people the opportunity to have a voice, translate words that haven't been heard, and paint pictures that no one has seen. Source Radio Network is fueling your life's purpose. How can you listen? www.blogtalkradio.com forward slash source radio. Welcome back, Source Nation. Now here's your host, Kathy B. Welcome back, Source Nation. Welcome back. You're listening live right here on the Ladies' Lounge. I am your host, Kathy B. We have about an hour and 59 minutes before we leave the live feed. Telephone number to reach us tonight is 619-924-0933. Again, 619-924-0933. Well, you guys know that um, I stated prior to going to break that we have an amazing book series coming up and uh, definitely some wonderful women that are coming into the studio sharing their amazing journeys. And tonight I'm going to be speaking with Miss Shaniqua Johnson. She's coming in and she's going to share her journey with us. I do believe that Shaniqua is here in the studio with us. Shaniqua, hello and welcome to the Ladies' Lounge. How are you this evening? I am well, Kathy B. Thank you so very much for having me on. It's a pleasure to be here and to speak to your listeners. I'm excited already. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm excited to have you. Of course, you know, Shaniqua, I didn't give you a bio this and I'll tell you why. We've had the opportunity really to begin to share you with all the ladies in the lounge and definitely the Source Nation family. But if you will, please, tell us a little bit more about you, and we'll jump into the conversation from there. Yes, great. Thank you. I am Shaniqua Johnson. I am a registered nurse by trade. I am a health coach, a life coach. I am an author, a motivational speaker, and I am the CEO of my business, A Better You LLC. So I am striving hard to help women reach their greatest potential mentally, physically, and spiritually. Spiritually, we've got to live our best lives, Kathy. This is so crucial in this time that we're living in. So this mm-hmm. is where I have devoted a majority of my, my profession, my career, just to helping to empower and to inspire women to live their best lives. I love it. I love it. Well, let's jump right into our conversation tonight and begin to share with the ladies here in the lounge a little bit more about what you're doing. Um, I mentioned that you are a contributing author for this brand new book. Tell the ladies about the book and uh, some of the things that you've been able to do uh, while being a part of this amazing journey. Yes, this is this is a great book project, and I, you know, big shout out to Cheryl Wood for putting together this amazing group of women. And I know your listeners have had a moment to, uh, to hear some of the amazing stories that are coming forth. This project is really, really just key because what it does is it brings together women who are living their life's passion, really trying to, uh, to empower the world and to get people doing the things that they were called to do. So we have all come together and we are uniting and we are trying to get the message out there and we are literally doing exactly what the book is titled. We are inspiring the nation. So it's a group of amazing ladies and we're sharing our stories of of struggles and our turmoils and really just connecting with women because we all have a story and sometimes we 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 shy away from those stories so in this this book project we're just hoping that women will 
open up the book and read the pages and really connect with the authors to say, you know what, that sounds like me. Oh, that's exactly what I'm going through. And they can just channel in that inner strength and just find, just find guidance to help them through, to help them to, to live better, to help them to push forward and to just do what it is that they, they are called to do in this life. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love that. Now, um, and thank you so much, Shanika, for sharing that. Let's talk about your contribution to the book and why was it so important for your journey to be told? It was very important for me to tell my story. And it kind of goes back to when I was down at my lowest point. Mm -hmm. And my lowest point in my life was when my marriage, my seven-year marriage dissolved, where my livelihood had been based around my husband, my children, my household, everything. And then one day I woke up and everything was gone. So being at my, my lowest point, at least the point where I felt the lowest, mentally, physically, spiritually, I was just down I was just down in the dumps, and it was a conversation that I had with God that I used to, I used to, I didn't even know how to put a prayer on what it was that I needed, but all I would do was cry out for help, and I would, I mean, I'd get up in the morning, oh, Lord, help me. I'd go to bed at night, oh, Lord, I just need help, and that is all that I would cry out was, I need help, I need help. And that that cry became my prayer. And God began to show me the help. He began to show me people who were there in my lives to help me and to help my children, to help us get over this rocky point that we were at. And I made a promise. I said, Lord, if you send me the help, I promise I'm going to help other people. I promise you that. I just need I just need to get my head above water. And so I got my head above water. So I am just fulfilling my promise to God that I will help whoever he puts me near that is in need of help, that is what I'm going to do. So I believe being in this book project is just a way for me to fulfill that promise and to continue mm-hmm. to fulfill that promise with every every person that I encounter that is in need of help because yeah. We all need help from time to time. No matter how strong we proclaim to be, there is still a moment where we're going to need help. And being in this book project just puts me right at the center for someone who's, who's turning to the chapter and, and feeling and connecting with what the words that I'm saying and saying, yes, this, this is what I need. This is the person that I need um, to help me. And, and literally the words come off pages when you're reading a book and you're so engrossed in a book where you feel like that person is right there with you. So I believe Mm -hmm. these stories that the ladies are sharing is really going to be like therapy to to everyone who picks up the book and begins to read it. They're going to find the help somewhere in those chapters. May not be in my chapter, may not be in someone else's chapter, but guarantee somewhere you're going to find the help that you've been craving, that you've been desiring, Mm -hmm. that you've been secretly praying about, that you may not have even uttered the words. I am just so believing in this project that it is going to connect to everyone who's just in need. Everyone who needs something, they're going to find it in this book project. And that's why it was so important for me to be a part of it, to impact the nation. Do you, you, you understand, like, that is so large scale that we yes. are impacting the nation, not the neighborhood, not the community, but the nation. Mm-hmm. And the way this, this world is going on with all the things that are transpiring day after day, we need to connect with one another. We need that, that international connection to just say, you know what, you're not in this alone. And there is right. help out there. We can help each other. That's right. If we just if right. we just unite with each other, we can help each other. I I love that, and I tell you why I get so excited um, when 
it is brought to my attention that a group of women have come together, they have collaborated, they have been able to become um, very transparent, and they have created a sister bond. Now, as as an African-American woman and understanding the stigma between our sisters, it is stated that we cannot get along, okay? It's simply put out in media that, Black women just cannot get alone. They can't work together. There's always going to be some form of friction there. And and I don't like that. I don't like the fact that we are portrayed as, as people that, that, that will hate on one another and that will tear each other down and can't build each other up. And the fact that I have been able to talk to women that have come together to say I have a story to tell and I know that there's another sister or there's another woman out there that may be where I was that I can simply help. And that's what I love. I love that. I love the fact that, um, you know, the story that you're telling, someone else may be feeling or dealing the same, dealing with the same thing. And the fact that you are transparent enough to speak about where you came from and where you're going and now where you are is amazing within itself. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the transformation because at one point, um, as you stated, you know, you, your marriage was ending. I, I am two times, two times I've been through a, div- a divorce. My last marriage was a marriage, Shaniqua, I, I really thought I was going to be married for lifetime. I really did. And when my marriage was ending, um, it was it was a devastating blow for me. I was going through a whole lot at the time also. And the fact that my marriage was ending and it was ending based upon infidelity, you know, everyone thought that I should have been mad at my husband. But I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to be mad. I didn't want to 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 sulk. Yeah, I cried. Yeah, I screamed. But I didn't stay in that place for very long. And I realized in order for my life to move on and in order for me to have the love that God has for me, the man to love me the way that I needed him to love me and want him to love me, I had to forgive. And I forgave my husband. He and I were married for eight years. Seven of those years, he sought attention outside of the home. Again, eight years on paper were married. Seven of those years, he sought attention outside of the home. And I was fully aware of what was going on. I was trying to fight and it was a man who no longer loved me. So I was trying to get him to love me. So with that being said, I have been able to tell that story and share that story without shame. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about what you're doing and what you're saying because you're offering the opportunity to be transparent, but yet you are healing others that may have walked in the same steps as you. What are your thoughts about that? That is, that's exactly, that is exactly what we're trying to get across with this book project. Mm -hmm. And the title Mm -hmm. of my chapter is called Finding Your Strength to Start Again. Mm -hmm. And we, we, look, we just, we just connected on that where we have to find the strength to start again after being in, in years of a marriage we have to find the strength, we have to find the courage to start again. And yeah. through my chapter, I want to encourage and I want to inspire other women who are going through similar, they have similar testimonies. I want to show mm-hmm. them, I want to be the example that they look to to say, yes, you can start again. And you can have a thriving and productive life. And sometimes we got to know when to say when because it sounds like you tried everything that you could to make that marriage work. 
And I'm not saying everybody should leave their marriage, but you got to be wise. You have to know when you need to start over, when you need to press that, press that reset button. And that's the story that I tell. And I give tips on, you know, I, I tell my story as to what I had to go through. And, I mean, I was down. And I, I was hit on all levels. Financially, I had taken a blow. Mentally, physically, spiritually, I, I had been hit on every side where I couldn't even stand. I didn't want to stand, Kathy. I was going Mm -hmm. through so much. It was weighing so much down on me. I was suffering with depression, and I didn't want to stand. I didn't want to start over. I wanted to sit in my mess, and I wanted to just sink into the ground. But I knew that I couldn't because there was more in store for me, that that was not where my story was going to end. That was just the period, and now it was time for me to turn the page and to start the next chapter of my life. And no, in that rebuilding process, it's not easy, but it is a beautiful process because what you do is you learn about yourself. And then that process that I had to go through, I had to expose every area of me. So every crevice that smelled, I had to smell it. I had to know what my role in all of this was. This Mm -hmm. was not time for me to play the blame game and say, oh, it was him. No, 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 no. We both went through this divorce. What was my part? What was my part? What was your part? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had to take ownership for that. I had to eat that. I had to swallow that big pill. And when I did that, (laughs) I became better because of it. So just as you said, Kathy, I'm not, I don't, I don't hate. I can't hate. I have to learn to forgive because forgiveness is not for the other person. It's for us. And me forgiving and me moving on has allowed me to be freer. And it has allowed me to tell my story. And I tell my story unapologetically because it is what it is. And me going through a divorce takes nothing away from me. It takes nothing away from me as a person, as a woman, as a wife. It takes nothing away away from me because you know what I just wasn't the wife for him but I am the wife for somebody else and we just have to find our strength we have to find the courage to start again and so that's what I'm telling in my in my chapter of the book because I need women to know all over I need them to know that it is okay to start again Yeah, you were down, but it's time to get up, dust your knees off, straighten your crown, and go forward because there is so much more. So I am totally passionate about helping women find their inner strength because we all have it. It's deep down inside of us, and it's covered up with fear and shame and doubt and hatred and everything. It's covering it up. So we've got to learn to dig past all of that. And, yes, sometimes it takes you looking in the mirror and seeing who you are, seeing Mm -hmm. who God created you to be. And your identity is not attached to whether or not you are a Mrs. or a Ms. Your, Your status, your relationship status has nothing to do with who you are to God and who he created you to be. So Mm -hmm. I like to help women discover that gift that they have inside of them and and just begin to flourish and to to find their truth and to walk in their truth and have the strength to just start again because it is a part of life. It's like a metamorphic Mm -hmm. change. You think the caterpillar wanted to come out of the cocoon? No, it was comfy in there. It was warm. It was toasty. The caterpillar had everything that they needed inside that cocoon. Mm -hmm. But it was time to start again. And when it's your time to start again, well, it's your time to start again. (laughs) Whether you want Mm -hmm. to or not, you've got to do it. So um, it's my hope that women will just, that they will read that chapter, that they will feast on it, that they will begin to see who they really are and begin to find that courage to start again, to do more, 
and to do it stronger this time around. I love that. I love that. Source Nation and the ladies in the lounge, we are speaking with Miss Janiko Johnson, and tonight she's uh, sharing with us her part of the collaboration um, of the book, Women Inspiring Nations. Great information that she is sharing. Now, Janiko, you said some wonderful things in our conversation tonight, and what I love most is the fact that just listening, it seems as though that you and I have walked our lives are parallel. And, and why do I say this? Because you mentioned that forgiveness was something that you had to do when you realized that your your marriage was ending. Not only that, you said to, and this is what I did, I had to look myself in the mirror and say, what part did you play, Kathy? Yes. What part did you play? Because you had to do something for him to walk outside the home. Mm-hmm. What'd you do? That's right. And, and of course, I was fighting with myself because I couldn't figure out what I did. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I started just coming up with different things. I said that I worked too much. I was too ambitious, you know. <laughs> and and I, I wanted you know, better things for us. So I started I started coming up with things, and then I started trying to say, okay, how can I better myself? Because if I was in, a, in an, another relationship, what is it that possibly I did in this one that I will not do in that one? So let's talk about that, because when we are faced with having to ask ourselves what part did we play, what did we do? How can we be, become better? Take us through some of the steps. What are some of the things that you have shared? Maybe it could be what you've done, but what is it that you feel that we need to know about making a positive transition, but yet owning and playing, you know, and owning the part that we, we played? What are your thoughts on that? We definitely have to look in the mirror. We don't want Mm -hmm. to because you know what? We like to blame other people. That's just human nature. You do something to me, if I can blame you for it, then I, it's not on me, it's on you. But what I had to do was to offer forgiveness, not only for him, I had to offer forgiveness to myself. So once I took a good look at my part, And really honest, because, yes, like you, Kathy, in the beginning when I started saying what my part was, it was really still blaming him. It was just Mm sugar-coated and and colored up. It was Mm -hmm. fluffy. And it was like, "Mm mm-mm, dig deeper than that because you're not hitting the surface. And you know when you hit the surface because that's when you set yourself free. That's when you can see the person and not cringe or, um, you know, get an attitude instantly. No, when you have been set free and you're walking in that, you you have no emotional attachment whatsoever. So not only did I have to forgive him, I had to forgive me for my part, for the things that I did that contributed to the breakdown of my marriage. And one of the things that I shared in my chapter was about my upkeep. That was a big issue for my husband. He wanted me to, you know, you know, have a little lip gloss on, have my hair done, you know, everything in, in place. But being a, a mother and trying to take care of little children in the household and, mm-hmm. and work, it was just difficult for me. So part of my ownership was I let go of me. That pretty young thing that he married that was well-kept and well-groomed that he was attracted to, I let her go. And I don't blame him for that because he tried in in the way that he could to encourage me to do it, but it just felt like pressure. It just felt like um, like he was being judgmental. But that was inside of me. That had nothing to do with him. He tried his best. But I was dealing with something emotionally, and it, it just was manifesting in a way that it just was dissolving the marriage. So I had to forgive Shaniqua 
for all mm-hmm. of the the mishaps that I did, for all the things that I said, for all of the actions that I did. And that's where I began to be set free because I wasn't, I didn't have that that guilt, that, that shame uh, hanging around at my feet anymore because I was able to forgive me. And it's not easy, but it is something that it, it's, it's necessary when we're trying to start again because you don't want to bring that negativity into the next relationship or the next one or the next one or even in your, your relationships with your family and your children or your, your coworkers. So we have to learn how to become better and not bitter during the process. Mm-hmm. So I am a firm believer that that ownership, taking ownership, offering up forgiveness, and, and then you know what? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta get yourself together. You gotta figure out what it is that you want to be. Who do you want to be when you grow up? That's always one of my favorite <laughs> questions, and, and people chuckle when you ask an adult that. But it's like seriously, who do you want to be? Mm-hmm. And so you need to decide in yourself who do you want to be. And I had to redefine who Shaniqua was. Because I had lost sight of her, and I had to learn how to say, well, this makes Shaniqua angry, and this makes Shaniqua happy, so this is what we need to do to keep Shaniqua over in this zone. So I had to learn how to love me. How else is anybody else going to come and love me if I don't even know how to love me? So that was all a part of the learning process that I had to go through, but it starts with being purged. Nobody likes to be purged. Nobody likes to be pruned because that thing hurts. But guess what? It's necessary for the flowers to bloom. It's necessary. Yes, it is. I I love that. I love that. I love the fact that you that you stated in order for us to love anyone else or possibly entertain being in another relationship, we have to begin to start working on ourselves. You know, coming out of a, a a marriage that you've been in for years and transitioning from a married life into a single life is very hard. Um, I found it very hard because I was raising two boys, okay, mm-hmm. and the fact that, that, that their father was leaving the home and now I am becoming a single parent, not one time, but becoming a single parent again the second time. And and trying to raise boys and doing this was very hard. Not only that, you know, trying to date again became very hard. So my thing was is that, and you said something, again, I, I feel to equal that our lives are parallel <laughs> because yes. my, my whole thing, too, was not only did I have to realize that I was now a divorced you know, woman that was a wife, the things that I wanted to do when I said I do, I actually put aside, meaning I had dreams and goals that I wanted to do. And being a career woman, being a mother, and being a wife, I just couldn't do. So I lost myself within that marriage also. And... I was fearful because I took on I took on that role. I took on that role as as mother and wife and and career woman and what Kathy really wanted to do was set aside. So by the time that the separation and the divorce was final, I'm standing there because not only that, I no longer worked at the uh television station that I worked with for many years. So I'm having to reinvent myself all over again, and that can be very hard, very hard. So let's talk to the ladies about that, having to reestablish ourselves, and I like the word reinvent, having to reinvent ourselves, knowing that in that period of time we lost ourselves. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, absolutely. And, yes, it really does sound like our lives are are parallel because I'm raising two boys as well. (laughs) (laughs) We we are definitely in 
blessing. Yes, it is imperative to reinvent yourself. And actually, during this book, that is that is what I tell about in this chapter, where I tell people, okay, this is where I was. We were we were thriving in a in a six figure household. We were thriving, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden, it suddenly was stripped away from me. So now, what am I to do? I used to work part time. What am I to do? Now I got to go work full-time. I hadn't worked full-time in seven years. Mm -hmm. I had to start again, and I literally had to reinvent myself. I had to reinvent myself professionally. I had to reinvent myself uh, spiritually. That, That is the time where I grew closer to God. Because I needed divine intervention, honey. I like it was just to a point where I just needed to do something different. You know, they say the definition of insanity is when you you do the same thing over and over again, over and over expecting again. a different yeah. result, right? That is just mm-hmm. pure insanity. But yet, that's what people do when they're trying to start over. They just go back to the way they they were. So if you used to meet, you know, the men out in the club, as soon as you get divorced, boom, where do you find yourself? Right back in the club. No, you don't want them. <laughs> you, you need to reinvent yourself because, and that mm-hmm. starts with looking in the mirror, finding out mm-hmm. what your likes and what your dislikes are so that way you can, you can lay the foundation for anybody else who even thinks that they're going to come and share your space. So we do, we certainly do. When we're starting over, we have to make sure that we know what we want. And then we got to put in the work. We got to put in the work and we've got to bring about the change that we seek. And I tell you, Kathy, I have, I've done it. I, I, I should say I'm not perfect, but I am well on my way. And mm-hmm. I feel better uh, mentally, physically, spiritually, and I am ready. I am ready to find love again. And yes, at first during the you know the first few years, it was it was scary as as all get out. It was scary, and yeah. I didn't know who was going to want me. I was in I was totally insecure, but then I had to find myself. And during that process, I began to lean and to totally depend on God. And I believed what God said that I was. I believed everything he said that I was. I began to believe him. So my beauty that I see within myself has nothing to do whether if somebody acknowledged that I got my hair done or my nails done. No. The beauty that radiates from within me comes from what God says about me. And that was the thing that helped me the most. It helped me to literally find my inner strength. So anything that comes in my way, I'm able to channel that inner strength, and I know that I am going to make it through. So I totally, wholeheartedly trust in God and his plan for my life, and I know he's not finished with me. So I can't stop at the Shaniqua that I am now. She good. She real good, but she is not to where God has predestined her to be. So that requires me every day, every day to continue to put forth that effort to say, you know what, I want to be better than I was yesterday. I want to be better than I was the day before. And you just constantly keep challenging yourself to do better, to live better, to be better, to say better things, to, you know, to just get better, but it is a process. It is a step-by-step process. There is no magic pill. You can't microwave this thing. you got to put this thing in the crock pot, okay? It <laughs> takes time. It takes time. And, and my words to women who are trying to find that strength to start over, they got to give themselves the time. You can't just one, two, three, fix this. It's going to take a few steps. It's going to take a few more steps to totally get to the place where you're comfortable, to love again. But the beautiful point about it is that there is another opportunity. 
every day that we're given, every day that we open our eyes and we have breath in our body and, and function of our limbs, it is another day to do better than the next day. So when you put your mind to reinventing yourself, oh, yeah, you're going to find love again, and you're going to find that love that, that is going to last a lifetime. So I encourage everyone who's listening, and even for you, Kathy B., don't you be afraid to start again because there is a newfound strength that comes for each time you start again, and you just keep getting better and better and more better each time you start again. That's right. I love it. I love it. Well, Shaniko, you have given us some great information and and definitely a beautiful inspiration. I definitely believe in starting again, um, even when um, the divorce happened. And I felt as though I failed not only uh, myself but my sons. Um, Looking back on it, now that it has been 10 years, um, that was the best thing because I was the one, even though infidelity was the demise, I was the one who said enough is enough. Mm-hmm. I was the one who said that and went forth to make it sure that I would no longer be hurt. And now that I understand who I am um, as as a woman, who I am, as a mother, and who I will be as a future wife has been nothing but amazing, you know, the journey within itself. And I tell people, I say, that was my journey. That was a journey that God blessed me with. Mm-hmm. It is my story to tell. So I definitely understand uh, what you're saying and, and not giving up, pushing on and, and, and uh persevering through. So thank you, thank you for sharing your information with us. You know, we always like to end, Shaniqua, either with some encouraging word or maybe some tips and advice that we have not shared in tonight's conversation. If you wish to contribute, I would love for you to do so at this time. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And and just for your listeners to know, that courage in your individualized journey, it's going to help other people. Sharing your story helps other people. We overcome by the hearing of others' testimonies. So when, when I share what I went through, you see how we connect? We, we're like, oh, my goodness, I went through the same thing. So you know that you're not alone, and there's power that comes from that. And our children, they watch us. They watch that. And, and they check out that strength. They're like, oh, check my mama out, rising above all these obstacles. And, and it makes them stronger. So, okay, nobody wants to go through a divorce, but if it means my children are going to be stronger because of it, I'll take it. I'll take mm-hmm. it. But, but some take-home points, and, and these are actually some things that I shared in the book, um, some tips, because I, I, I always like to, I like to share my story, but then I also like to leave, you know, the readers, the listeners with some usable tips. That's just me as a, a health coach and a life coach. I have to give you, you tips on, on how you can, you can try to apply what I did to your own life. So there were four things that I shared in the book, and I go into more detail and, and I describe it more uh, in detail in the book. But the tips were, one, to trust God. Got to learn to trust God through everything, mm-hmm. the ups, the downs. Two, we have to have faith in ourselves. We've got to trust that we make the right decisions. And when we don't make the right decisions, that we're going to be okay. We're going we're gonna to be able to, to bounce back. So we've got to have faith in ourselves. But then we've got to put in the work. Faith without works is dead. You can't expect great things to happen if you're not willing to put in the work. And putting in the work is to reinvent yourself. Mm-hmm. And then you've got to reach out for help. You can't do this alone. You can. It's going to take you some time. But when you partner mm-hmm. together, and that's what's so beautiful about this amazing book project, that these women from different walks of life, I didn't know any of these women. And we have come together 
and we are building on each other's strength, Mm -hmm. and we are encouraging and inspiring women, a multitude of women. See, that's the power of getting help. When you link up with somebody else with a similar story, a similar testimony, mm, great things begin to happen. Fireworks start. And that's when we start to heal. That's when we start to, to, to get better, when we can find strength in locking arms with others. So I thank you for this moment in time, Kathy, to lock arms together and to inspire <laughs> yeah. your listeners. This was phenomenal, and I hope, I hope Every lady that listens to this goes and tells another lady because we all go through this, and it's a mm-hmm. secret, silent pain that we feel like we have to we have to bear the burden of it on our own. But we gotta get the word out there. We gotta say, sister, girl, I'm here. I've been through it. There's no shame. I don't care what happened in your marriage. You can find the strength to start again and again. Okay. And again. Okay. I love that. Beautiful said, beautifully said. If you will, Shaniqua, um, share with the ladies in the lounge of the Source Nation family, how can we get more information about you and continue to support you in your efforts? Oh, yes. I am all up and down social media. I am on Instagram, Shaniqua Johnson RN. I'm on Facebook, Shaniqua Johnson RN. I am on Twitter, RN underscore S Johnson. I have a website, www.ShaniquaJohnsonRN.com. And I, I am in, on LinkedIn. You can connect me with whatever platform you're on. There's always a way to connect. And I want the listeners to connect, whether it's just to get words of encouragement or to lock arms and to tell your story. Whatever it is, it's very important to connect because there are there is a strength that comes from when we are connected together. Mm-hmm. That's right. Love it, love it. Well, Shaniko, again, thank you so much, lady, for coming in and giving us some great information in reference to your journey and the uh, new book, Women Inspiring Nations. I love it. We definitely look forward to hearing more great things from you. Thank you so much for coming in tonight. Thank you, Kathy. You're welcome. You're welcome. Well, well, so I think you heard it right there from Ms. Shaniqua Johnson. She is a collaborating author in the brand-new book, Women Inspire Nations. What I love most about our conversation tonight was the fact that um, our lives parallel a lot, right, ladies? They do. Um, the fact that she and I both have gone through um, divorces and that we were able to, to really take a look at what happened in the marriage, but we were able to go beyond that and not place blame on anyone else, but recognize the part that we played and decided that we must fix it. So this is what I'm, I'm saying to you ladies. There comes a time and place in our lives where we have to stop and recognize what is going on. If you're going through some things and if you're at the point where you feel as though you want to blame One thing that I'm going to tell you to do is take a moment and look in the mirror and just ask yourself, why are you there? What is it that you're doing? Now, this may sound simple to you, the the, the questions that I'm asking, but trust me, when you're facing yourself in the mirror and you're asking those questions, they become very hard. And once you're able to give yourself back the answer, that's right, you're looking at yourself and you're talking to yourself. (laughs) Once you're able to do that, then you're ready to reach the area of growth. See, growth is not easy, and a lot of people don't like that. They don't like the fact that they have to be uncomfortable. So what Shaniqua and I did, we did that exercise to the point where we had to ask the hard questions but we had to put in the work. And that's what you have to do. In order to get to the other side, you have to put in the work. And trust me, when you get to the other side, it is simply beautiful. 
So, Shimiko, thank you so much for coming in. Beautiful young lady. Of course, all of her information and more can be found on Kathy B. Source Radio Network, as well as our main station page, Source Radio Network. Thank you so much for being here tonight, and definitely continue to support us because we're doing some wonderful things right here on the Ladies' Lounge and giving you all the opportunity to really begin to have a voice and hear some amazing stories and do some wonderful things in your life. We'll be back here next Friday once again for more great conversations and dynamic guests. You all have a wonderful evening. We'll see you back here again next week.